on a spiritual and a mental level. Mm -hmm. So fathers are excluding the very important part of a child's life when they exclude his spiritual development. Because we are in reality spiritual beings and we're on a spiritual journey, but yet we exclude the spirituality from our children in their upbringing. Now, a lot of children don't like going to church. They want to stay home. They want to do this because other children ain't coming to church. I don't want to go to church either. Not knowing that they're setting up a spiritual foundation for that child. When they come to church, even though they may not give their full attention, but the child subliminally hears everything that goes on. Right? And when due process and time come for that child to use that spiritual knowledge, in his adulthood, it would be there. All he got to do is pull it up off the computer. But see, if the child ain't here to hear, right. how can you hear without a teacher? Right. How can he preach except he be sent? Yes. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are y'all here? Right. Amen. Now, I understand that a lot of children are going to do what they want to do. And that's natural. But I don't believe in making a child do anything against his will. Because children, they have a mind too, and they have to make choices in life. And a lot of times, you got to let them make their own choice. In order to let them have experience in life, so when they make this choice, then they'll know that it was their choice, and it's their choice is the reason why they are suffering what they are suffering or going through what they're going through. So let a child have some room. Let them choose what they want to do in life. And I never, ever tried to choose what my child was going to be. Or try to steer my child in one way. So you're going to go this way and no other way. Mm -hmm. Because children have a blueprint within themselves. Just like a seed has a blueprint in it. A flower knows exactly what to do. A flower seed when it's put into the ground. It's got the blueprint of the whole flower. And the child has got a seed of life in it. And that seed knows everything that child's supposed to do. So sometimes you gotta let the seed in the child germinate and let it produce by itself. Yeah, you gotta be there like a gardener. You gotta dig around it, keep the weeds out from around it, and water it. But let it grow on its own. And sometimes when you see there are weeds there, knock the weeds away. And sometimes if, if it's growing up a little crooked, kind of straighten it up a little bit. Are y'all here? So it can grow up straight. But don't interfere. Because a lot of times you interfere and it causes the child to go another direction than the main direction it was supposed to go when you interfere. And a lot of parents don't understand that. But he said, children, hear the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Now, I know it takes a mother and a father to raise a child. And I think there's something lacking there when there's not a father in the home. I think there's something lacking there when there's not a mother in the home. Because God ordained this unity of two to raise a child. There are single parents in the home, and these single parents are doing the best they can. But yet, it's not the ordination of God for a single parent to raise a child. You need two. In the African civilization, in ancient times, they say it takes a village or a nation to raise a child. So everybody take part in raising your child. So I think there got to be a balance in the home in order for the child to grow up balanced. If there is balance in the home, the child will grow up also in balance. And he will become lacking in certain areas of his spiritual development. So children, hear the instruction of a father. I prophesied over Jocta, my son. I think he gave one Sunday. 
And I remember saying that God is bringing you out because Jonathan had been in a shell for years. Wouldn't talk or communicate with nobody. And he still ain't completely come out. But there's a depth of knowledge in him. Mm -hmm. And he's very wise. And he listens and attends when you don't think he's listening or attending. Mm -hmm. And he used to rebel harshly when I give him instruction. But now I notice it's changing. Mm -hmm. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. See, I don't walk around the house with a belt in my hand, chastising my children. Mm -hmm. I think my words are sufficient. And when I speak and my words are not carried out, then sometimes I show my disdain or my righteous anger for their disobedience and following through my word, what I told them. But now he's come out a little bit out of the shell and he takes instruction and he obeys and do it without grumbling. And I can see that he's blooming. You know, you watch your children, you know, you, you, you pay attention to them. You know, a lot of things they want to do, and you tell them, no, it's not time. You know, some children, they're anxious to get out there and do this and do that. But the parent has got to know when the time is. Because God gives you a clock for their lives, as well as them. They have a clock for their life, and they know just about the time when it's ready for them to move on. And same way about the parent because you gave the child life. So God gave you a clock for that child's life. And therefore, God gives you the time when it's time to tell that child certain things and time for that child to move on with his life. All you see here. Amen. So that's why it's important to have a spiritual base, a spiritual foundation because you can't know these things without a spiritual foundation, mm -hmm. without spiritual insight. Are y'all still here tonight? Mm -hmm. So children, hear the instruction of the Father. Now I don't claim to be the wisest father, but I am a wise father. Mm -hmm. And a wise father would not let their children run around with unwise people Amen. or people that are up to no good Amen. Oh, no. <laughs> and I think you should always at all times know where your child is Jock didn't come to me one day and said when when am I going to get old enough so I can get out of the house and go somewhere by myself do I have to be 21? I said, no, you don't have to be 21, Jocelyn. But you have to be responsible. But <laughs> well, when am I going to get a key to the house? When you become responsible. <laughs> See, a child want to do certain things, but they got to meet a certain criteria of responsibility before you can trust the child with certain things. So I let him know, I said, reason why you can't go nowhere by yourself because you're not responsible yet. You're not aware and you're not watching around you because there are many pitfalls out there you can fall into. I let him go ride his bicycle. He rides his bicycle, go up to the store and come right back. I said, come right back. And I'm going to time you. Oh, you see here. See, if you show a child that you're concerned about it, and try to discipline the child and show the child the right way, they may not like it right then and there, but they'll understand that you're concerned about them and you love them and you're trying to show them the right way. Even though they rebel, and that's natural in a child, to rebel against the instructions of their parents. But see, we have a great responsibility as well as the child. Our responsibility first and foremost, is to produce that child. And produce a child that's going to make a mark in this earth. Because two people coming together producing children, they got to understand one thing. Whatever's in your mind 
and conception is going to affect the child from birth. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, everything about you will affect that child in the womb. White folk know about thoroughbred horses and pedigree dogs. Come on, yeah. And they're supposed to be the top line. Now, if they can make pedigree dogs and thoroughbred horses, what about humans? You can't get a wine over and a drug addict and put them together and expect to produce an Abraham or a Jesus. Both of you got to be on the same level. Yes, Lord. Sister Davis and I was on the same level, going the same direction. And that's how we produced another Howard. Amen. Male child. He looked just like me. Some of my younger people, when I was, you know, older, younger. <laughs> he looked just like I used to look. And he's a very, very observant person. And he's a thinker, just like me. And now that I've got my books in the garage, I've got three shelves, two shelves and a half of books. He said, like, I ain't got no better sense than going here and read these books, because it don't make sense. My dad, I got all these books, and, and I ain't reading them. So I see my books everywhere. <laughs> And I have to go up behind behind and pick my books up and put them back. All y'all see here. Because, you know, these books are very valuable. And you can't find these books anymore. So I'm steady going behind and picking up my books and putting them back. And when he wants them again, he knows where they are. All you see here. But he's reading them. And Jockton is starting to read, too. Porter has always loved to read. But Jockton is getting into reading because this is how you grow Mentally and spiritually is through reading and studying and trying to understand. Because you got to start looking at things from different viewpoints. You just can't look at a problem or a situation from one viewpoint. Mm -hmm. You got to go around this way and case it out that way. Then you got to go around and case it out this way and, and, and you got to make an intelligent decision, the outcome. Not just by one point of view, and this is something black folk have always done. We've taken things at face value. He said it had to be true. Not always. Now, God has pre-established righteous cycles. How many know that? And there are cycles which control fire. There are cycles which control air. There are cycles which control water and earth mm -hmm. and the cycles also control seasons mm -hmm. and the cycles of birth and growth joy mm -hmm. and happiness mm -hmm. and the renewing of the spirit and spiritual evolution mm -hmm. now in an all depth study of the cycles of life will render a deep deep knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. of the basic principles of life and the Creator. And how to use them to keep the world in the spirit of holiness. Somebody was saying today there are spirits and there's the laws of the spirit, there are laws of life, there are laws of salvation. And just because you don't know these laws, they still exist. And just because you broke the law and didn't know that you broke the law, you don't get away. Huh? Uh -huh. There are laws that we're breaking every day. Unseen laws. And that don't mean that we're innocent just because we break them and we didn't know these laws existed. You should know. <laughs> they change laws every day. Come on. And when they stop you, they say, well, didn't you know? Well, I didn't know the law. But well, you should have known. Well, I'm going to write you up. Come on. So there are laws that people, we've got to understand. This is why we got to dig deeper in the word of knowledge and understand why we are here. 
Amen. And let us begin to think. Uh-huh. And let us choose the material from which we shall build our temples. Mm-hmm. So you're building the temple right now. Temple of the living God. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get in the mirror and look and say, Lord, well, thank you for this temple. This is a nice temple here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Measurements proper. Everything is here. Mm-hmm. You gave me a pretty good temple, God. Mm-hmm. There's some people that are dissatisfied with the temple, God. Mm-hmm. This temple is too black, boy. How come you didn't put good hair on this temple? Mm-hmm. <laughs> My feet too big. How come you gave these big old feet? <laughs> Take your glasses, I'll be free. God bless you with that teacher. And it's up to you to maintain this stuff. You buy a house, that's upkeep. Huh? You just can't buy no house to live in and not expect to have the upkeep. Your water might go out. Huh? Your electrical system might go down. You may have all kinds of problems in the house, but you got to figure in the upkeep of the house. This is the temple of God, and, and God wants you to have a clean temple. God wants you to have a well temple. And it's the only way you're going to survive on this plane if you keep this temple healthy. See, we are spirit, and we make contact with this world through this temple. But when this temple ceases to exist, we cease to make contact with this world or plane of existence we live in now. The spirit animates the body. And without the spirit, there is no animation. When the spirit leaves the body, there is no more animation. You can't move, you can't raise your hand. It's the spirit that helps you to move and have your being. Amen. So the process that the average man calls thought is not constructive thinking. God hastened the day when people would realize that all that is, has been, or will be is the result of thought. In the beginning was the word In the beginning was thought. It wasn't a word because how can you speak without thinking? In the beginning was thought. And the thought produced the word. Hello? Now thought is both creative and destructive. Not only are we making our bodies now, y'all, but we are making those which we shall wear in the future. Through your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And by future, I mean when an individual is reincarnated. That's right. So the spirit produces more holy thoughts, mm-hmm. which form the idea that produce action, mm-hmm. which are never contrary to the will and the intentions of the Creator when you're thinking through the Spirit. Hmm? These actions cannot be misinterpreted in any way to influence man to think wrong or to do wrong against himself, his fellow man, or God. <laughs> the evil one has been very clever, y'all. He has locked us into his cycle of death where we grow as a blind man at noonday and however throughout the Holy Scriptures. There is an allusion to a great divide, which will also be the great deliverance. We must take note that at every great deliverance, there is a separation. huh? Instead of an integration, there is a separation. And as a matter of fact, the Hebrew nation began with the setting apart of Abraham from society and people which he knew. Then Abraham had to get out among his people. God said, get out among your kinfolk and your relatives, and I'm going to make you a great nation. 
And I'm going to make your name is, is, is great all around the world. Your seed going to be like the sands on the, on the seashore and stars in the heaven. But you got to get out around your kin folks and relatives in order for me to do that. Y'all ain't here. And not only kin folk and relatives, but people in jail. Y'all ain't here. Amen. See, that's a separation. See, our problem back in the 60s was immigration. We wanted to integrate with white folk. We wanted what white folk had, not knowing what we already had. So therefore, we forsake what we had in order to inherit what we thought they had was good. But it was bad. And we're just now finding out it was bad for us. We had institutions, we had stores, we had barbershops, we had all these things. And we could have continued to co-op with our brothers and sisters and build a greater institution, but we left all of our institutions and integrated with his institution. And now he's closing the doors on his institution, and we are left without an institution. Why didn't we learn the lesson from Abraham and all the forerunners in the Bible when they separated from their enemies? Why is it come out from among them, be ye separate, said the Lord, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. We got to separate. I ain't thinking about no integration. Yes, sir. You can't integrate with your enemy. If he's God's enemy, he got to be your enemy. Why do you want to integrate with him? There got to be a separation. Now, the Holy Bible also teaches us that we must separate the clean from the unclean. Ain't that right? And the holy from the profane. Then if deliverance begins with separation, we must differentiate our objectives from the objective of America and the world. So we got to set our agenda aside from America's agenda because America's agenda is not our agenda. Mm -hmm. And we must separate our morals, our principles, our values, and outlook, and then we must conclude by separating ourselves. Mm -hmm. If Abraham had to separate, we wanted to separate. Now, I got ten more minutes. <laughs> Revelations 18, 1 through 5. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. <laughs> Having great power. And the earth was made bright with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of demons. And the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Uh -huh. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich through her abundance of her delicacies. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, black folk. Say it, say it, brother. Come on, That you be not partakers of her sin, and that you receive not of her place. Somebody was saying that these people took these food shops. And now they're getting sick. Don't even know what was in the shop. Everybody buy in with the system. Now they got a, a parking hospital truck that goes around and comes in. To take care of your children, give them shots they need. Free now. Only you knock on it, you're going to come to your neighborhood with a truck, a hospital truck now. they got to be pretty desperate. To experiment on you. Because they know time is short and they got to put cancer, they got to put AIDS, they got to put all kinds of disease in your system as fast as they can because the millennial is just about here. 
So that's why we got to come out of her. Huh? And not be partakers of her sin. And receive not her plague because they put disease in you in order to try to cure disease. Now that's not divine law to put a disease in a person to try to kill another disease. That is against the laws and righteous cycles of God. Only a beast that's out of control and not in his right mind will give you something deadly to try to kill something that's not dead. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And God has remembered her iniquity. Yes. Revelation 18, 1 through 5. Yes. Now closing. This is for the esoteric. A child brought to his mother a piece of ice. Some of y'all heard this before, but I want to document this. He brought to his mother a piece of ice and asked, what is this? The mother answered, it's ice. Again, the child asked, What is there in ice? And the mother answered, There is water in the ice. The child desired to find the water in the ice. And, it, and he produced a hammer. And he pounded the piece of ice into little bits. And the water soon changed all the ice into water. Uh -huh. And the child was grievously disappointed. Uh -huh. For the ice that the child supposed contained water had disappeared. Uh -huh. And the child said, where is the ice that contained this water? Uh -huh. And so it came to pass that the mother was compelled by the child's persistent Mm -hmm. to say ice is all water mm -hmm. there is no such thing as ice, it's ice. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. Come on. that which we call ice is crystallized or frozen water mm -hmm. the child understood it then when the mother told him there's no such thing as ice. Mm -hmm. It's only crystallized or frozen water. Now, a student brought to his teacher some water and asked, what is water? What does it contain? The teacher answered, water contains oxygen. Mm -hmm. and hydrogen well, 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 well. and then explain how the two gases might be separated and set free by heat mm -hmm. the student boiled the water until all of the molecules of oxygen and hydrogen had been set free mm -hmm. but he was surprised to find that all of the water had disappeared all right. uh -huh. Then the student asked of the teacher, Where is the water that held the gases that have escaped? Then was the teacher compelled by the student's persistent person to answer. Water itself, listen carefully, water itself is the product of oxygen and hydrogen. Water does not contain anything other than these gases. Follow me here? Water does not contain anything other than these gases, which is oxygen and hydrogen. In reality, there is no such thing other than these gases. Mm -hmm. There is no such substance or fluid as water. 
If you know what water is made of, we call it H2O. It's high tension. Hmm? And oxygen. Two parts. Now, if we understand that there is no such thing or substance or fluid as water, and that which we name water mm -hmm. is a rate of motion in operation by the union of two gases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Science class. Mm -hmm. Two gases are two parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen. And of course, this phenomenon disappears when the union of gases is broken. Then the student understood. Now, a devout scientist presented himself before God, the scientist, and said, Lord, what are these gases men call oxygen and hydrogen? So we're going a little bit deeper now. Uh -huh. It started out as water. Uh -huh. But now, here's a devout scientist that really understand there is a God in the universe as you look through the microscope you see all these things there's got to be a God because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you look in one drop of blood you see mountains you see streams you see valleys and rivers in one drop of blood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's life in the blood so this scientist asked God so now what are these gases men call oxygen and hydrogen and the Lord God answered and said they are molecules listen carefully molecules in the blood and body of the universe. You mean the universe has got blood and a body? <laughs> then inspect the sign of the Lord. Would thou tell me of the kind of molecules that compose thy blood? God told him first, the universe consists of molecules and a body. But the sign says, and now Lord, what kind of molecules is your body and your blood? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ah. Good. He has come with that. The Lord replied, these same molecules, gases, uh -huh. are principles compose my body and my blood. For I and the universe are one and the same. Once again, the scientist said, My Lord, <laughs> may I ask then, what is spirit and what is matter? Got something you're thinking now. What is spirit? And what is matter? And thus answered the Lord, as ice and water are one, uh -huh. and the gases and water are one, yes. mm -hmm. so is spirit and matter one. Mm -hmm. Now the different phases and manifestation by man in the molecules of my body, that is the universe, are caused by the word. Mm -hmm. Thus they are my thoughts clothed with form. Mm -hmm. So we are thoughts clothed with form. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish it up. I'm carrying you somewhere. Now the scientists fell bold. Mm -hmm being redeemed from fear and asked, is my blood then identical with thy blood mm. in composition and divine essence? He asked God this. Is my blood identical with thy blood in composition and divine essence? And the Lord said, yes. Thou art one with the Father. 
The scientists now understood and said, now my eyes are open. All right. And I perceive that when I eat, I partake of thy body. When I drink, I drink of thy blood. And when I breathe, I breathe of thy spirit. The so-called matter is pure intelligence and nothing else because there is not anything else. So God's blood and his body is the same as our blood and our body. Mm -hmm. Numbers 23 and 19 said, God is not a man, but God is a man. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is a man. Yes. And man is a God. Think of man. Bam. Kabooyah. And I is through. Um, <laughs> Let's give him a great big hand clap. Amen. Don't get it until the next millennium. <laughs> or the next lifetime. But for those that have gotten it, then you have been chosen to get it. You've been put here to get it. Because this is your time. Yes, sir. This is your space. And it's your time to rise to your greatness and through the word is help you to rise to your greatness as a God on earth answer me this why do you think they destroyed all the Egyptian artifacts most of them and broken all the metal at you and the writings off the walls and the tombs and broken the noses off and destroyed a lot of the history of the ancients because they knew that those people were actually God. Amen. 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 Somebody said, well, how did they trick God? They didn't trick God. They tricked man. They tricked man. God cannot be tricked. So when man gets at a point where he relaxes and thinks he done made it, then... Dead brother, dead brother. See, the God essence in a man is still there. But a man that's not aware of that is not there, he acts like a man instead of a God. And anybody can manipulate and use that man because he's not aware that he's a God. Not spirit. Yes. He thinks he's just flesh and blood. And he called on a savior outside himself to save him. And that's the big fraud that everybody has embraced down through generations that you need some outside source to save a God within you. When in reality, you save yourself. Have I told you the truth? And the truth made you free. Hey, God, good. We thank God for you. We're going to pass out some meals so 